Hello again, good to be back with you. And I'd like to go over today how to calculate the square root of a complex number. Now this shows up in math classes sometimes, showing up in one of my classes, which is why uh, my students have, have asked for information on how to do this. Seems like a good thing to do for a video. So here we go. Before we do anything else, one of the first things we've got to do is we've got to get past the yuck factor, okay? So let's, let's, let's get rid of this. All right, we're not going there. The two worst names in the world for numbers are real and imaginary, okay? Terrible names. If I become king of the world, when I become king of the world, perhaps you'll vote for me, I am going to rename those. They're going to be up and down numbers, or left and right, or red and blue, or front and back, or something, anything but real and imaginary. But nobody asked me, and so we're stuck with these, uh, these uh, names, real and imaginary numbers. Well, real is okay. Imaginary makes it sound like there's something wrong with it, like it's somehow not a legitimate mathematical entity. There is. It is. Okay? When mathematicians first started seeing this show up, oops. And what, there's no such thing as the square root of a negative one, so they just gave it this name imaginary. And eventually started figuring out that if they treated that as if it were a legitimate mathematical entity, they kept getting the right answer. Well, that's a pretty good hint that maybe it is uh, something that's, that's, that's correct. And, of course, now there's this huge uh, foundation of theory behind it, of proof behind it. We know that absolutely this is okay. This is a legitimate mathematical entity. Just means there are two kinds of numbers. There are real and imaginary. And if you want to plot them on axes, all right, thanks to uh, Rene Descartes, we know that we can turn equations into pictures. Okay. I can plot a number right there, and maybe that's 1 plus 1i. That's just a picture of a complex number. That's what it looks like. Well, if the number can be drawn like this, there must be a way to find a square root of it, and there is. Okay, There's a couple ways, actually. Um, just by the way, I went to a gentleman I know who is an actual mathematician and asked him, okay, I know about real numbers, I know about imaginary numbers, is there some other kind of number floating around out there that I should be worried about that I just haven't discovered yet? And he assured me, no, there isn't. There's real, there's imaginary, there doesn't seem to be anything else. So once you know what real and imaginary are, you're good to go. You don't have to be afraid that there's something else lurking out there. So here's how this works. Let's say that I have some complex number, and here's the, here's the simplest complex number I can think of, it's just i, it's actually just a straight imaginary. And if the, the number you're trying to, try to take the square root of, the argument of the square root, is complex, stands to reason that the result should be a, a complex as well. So typically what we'll do is we'll do that. We'll say, I don't know what that is, but whatever it is, it's equal to a plus ib, where a and b are just numbers, decimal numbers. All right, so, well, okay, great. Now what do I do? Well, here's the thing, you can, one thing you can do. If I square both sides, I get this. Mm, all right, now what? Well, here's the fun part. I know that the real part is a minus b squared, a squared minus b squared, and I knew the, the imaginary part is 2ab. Well, this is really this, okay? So I know that a, 0 over here must be the real part over here, all right? There's that part. And the imaginary part must be 2ab, so 1i equals 2ab. Well, what I've got now is two equations and two unknowns. Okay, there you go. So if you work this out, you find out that a is the square root of 2 over 2, and so is b. Okay, now, just one thing. Because I'm taking square roots all over the place, I, there could, these could be positive or negative. Now, because of this, means that a has to equal a squared has to equal b squared. So if a is negative, b has to be negative. If a is positive, b has to be positive. We generally assume positive square roots here, but just remember there are some uh, positive or negative sometimes. So that's a, that's b, and I can write 
this. I'll get my head out of your way. There, that's the square root of i. Now, is it obvious to, to uh, a beginner that that's the square root of i? Absolutely not. I sure didn't expect it. I actually started with uh, 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 MATLAB. I just typed that into MATLAB and got that. And went, okay, I don't know where this came from. When you go through this logic, it's obvious where it came from. Now, this is also true. So be careful, make sure you get your pluses and minuses uh, arranged correctly here. Let's do one more. Let's see. Go a little bit more complicated. Once you've done two of them, you can do any number of them. All right, so let's try that. 1 plus i. Okay, and we'll also assume that's a plus ib. All right. And if I square both sides, I get the exact same thing we had before. Now, you see how this works? Once you know the process, it works for all numbers. This is nice. Okay, so let's, let's gather the real terms. Okay, 1 now has to equal a squared minus b squared. That's the real term. And the imaginary term is also 1. It's to equal 2ab. Okay, and if, if you, if you grind this out, you get a, uh, have to find the root of, I think it's a fourth order polynomial. This is one that I have to just write down. This is, this is not going to be one of these ones where it's, it's, it's nice and tidy to figure out. Okay, and then it's 1.09868. B equals uh, 0.45509. Okay, so there you go. That's if you, if, you, if you run through this, this little, little simple calculation, those are the two values of a and b that make this work. So what you're going to find out is that the square root of 1 plus i equals 1.09868, let me double check that, plus 0.45509i. So there you go. There's the square root of, let's see right there, 1 plus i. Okay, and again, that can be negative and that can be negative. As long as they're both negative, you'll still get that. You'll, uh, it'll still work out. So be careful when you take your square roots there. Okay, now you have it. Number one, square root of an imaginary or a complex number, absolutely a thing. Absolutely, that's something that you may need to calculate. Absolutely, it's a legitimate mathematical entity in spite of the name imaginary. Okay, this process works for all imaginary numbers. Okay, you get this equation, you square both sides, you get two equations and two unknowns, they're nonlinear, okay, and solve them to get the answer. So there you go. Hope this helps, and I'll see you next time.